In this Java tutorial, you're going to learn about using classes and creating objects. By the way, an object is also known as an instance of a class or an instance. First, let's talk about what an object is. In object-oriented programming languages, like Java, objects have two types of characteristics. First, they have states, which in Java we represent with field variables. Second, they have behaviors, that in Java we represent with methods. Imagine a light bulb object. Two states might be color and size. Three behaviors might be flash, turn off, and switch color. Let's create a light bulb object. The object has the value yellow for the color field and the value five for the size field. If we call the flash method, it causes the object to behave in a certain way. Now let's call the switch color method. You can see that the switch color method changed the value of the color field. It's very common for programmers to write methods to modify the values of fields. Your next question might be, where did the code for the object come from? The answer is from a class. A class is like a blueprint or a template for an object. There are a number of classes built into Java, so often we just use those pre-made classes. Some examples of pre-made classes are the string class, arrays class, and scanner class. You've already probably used at least one of these. Sometimes programmers write their own classes. Regardless, once you have a class, you can use it to create any number of objects. Anyway, now that we've covered classes and objects conceptually, let's learn how to create objects with code. Here's how we can create an object from the lightbulb class. We start by stating the name of the class, in this case lightbulb, then a variable, in this case x, followed by equals new lightbulb, open close parentheses, semicolon. What we did is created a variable called x of type lightbulb and told it to point at a newly created lightbulb object. Now let's look at another way to declare and initialize a lightbulb object. On this line, we create a lightbulb variable y. On the next line, we create the lightbulb object and tell y to point at that object. We're doing the same thing, but in the second example, we split up the steps. We can't access an object directly, so we need a variable to allow us to identify the object. It's like how people need names so we can identify them. Let's look at a third example. Here we declared a variable z and initialized it with a new light bulb object. But you'll also see an additional piece of data. Anything inside the parentheses gets passed to the constructor and is used in the creation of the object. In this case, I pass a string green to the constructor, which caused the light bulb's color field to be set to green. Now you can't just pass anything you want to a class's constructor. The programmer of the lightbulb class determined what type of data the constructor could accept. When working with the class, you need to know what types of arguments you can pass to the constructor when making a new object. Next, let's talk more about fields. We learned earlier that in Java, an object's states are managed by field variables. There are two types of fields you need to know about. The first are called class variables because they belong to the class. They are also known as static fields. The second are called instance variables because they belong to the individual instances. These are also called non-static fields. Let's pull up the lightbulb class and some lightbulb instances again. The lightbulb class defines color as an instance variable. That means each instance has its own unique copy of the variable. When we change the value for the instance that y is pointing at, it only affects that one instance. Size is defined as a class variable. It belongs to the class and is shared by all the instances of the class. When we change the value of a class variable, it affects the class and all instances of the class. When coding a class, the programmer decides which fields are class variables and which are instance variables. Next, let's look at methods again. 
there are two types of methods, static and non-static methods. First, static methods can be called from either the class or an object, while non-static methods can only be called from an object. To understand better, let's look at two different methods in the light bulb class. The decrease size method is static, and the switch color method is non-static. Let's write some code to see how we can access these methods. Lightbulb.decreaseSize. Decrease size is static, so we can call it from the class itself. There doesn't even need to be an object in existence for us to call this method. Alternatively, we can create an instance of the lightbulb class. Now we can call the method decrease size from the variable q, which is pointing at a lightbulb object. We can also call the switch color method from the q variable. However, as a non-static method, switch color cannot be called directly from the lightbulb class. This line of code will give the error non-static method cannot be referenced from a static context. The final thing to know is that static methods can only access class variables, while non-static methods can access both class variables and instance variables. This is why the switch color method had to be non-static, so it could access the instance variable color, which it changes. This fact will be important when you learn about writing classes in later lessons. Before we end, I wanted to mention that there are a few classes that have unique ways of creating objects. Some examples include the string class and the array class. Don't worry about those now, but be aware that there are exceptions. I'm glad you could join me today. To keep learning Java, click on the image for the next video. But before you go, tell me in the comments, are you learning Java in school or on your own?